I don't need to tell you any more about Lisa Seal, except that she's with the Millvale Community Library. <laughs> Thank you. Well, my story begins in 2009, in May of 2009. Um, my husband's law firm was involved in a day of giving activity and we were sent to Millville, which I was familiar with because I had gone to Shaler High School and lived in Shaler all my life. So I was familiar with Millville. We went and we were brought to an empty lot where my daughter and I planted over 400 sunflowers and my son and my husband fixed a fence. And this lot was, um, it had been destroyed by the floods that, that plagued Millville, but also um, the building that was there had burned down. So there were a lot of heavy metals into the soil and a lot of problems, a lot of contaminants. So they were trying to reclaim that soil because they wanted to put a garden in. So at the end of the day, I'm tired, I'm hot, I'm very sweaty, gross covered in dirt, and one of the girls I had been talking to all day came up to me and said, you've got to meet somebody. And um, I was thinking, well, boy, I'm in a great condition to meet somebody right now, so why not? Um, so I went, I followed her down around the block, and we went into a building that looked like it had been condemned. Um, it was also destroyed by flood waters and it was vacant. It had been vacant since 2004 when um, Hurricane Ivan had swept through and it sent poor Rudy, the TV repairman that owned the building, into retirement. So um, we, we get to the building and we go inside and there are wires hanging and mud and dirt and it's just a mess. But sitting near the window on a five gallon bucket that was overturned with a laptop is this man. And this man has this mass of gray hair curls that are just everywhere. And he says, welcome to the Millville Library. <laughs> and I looked around and I said, I have just been introduced to the town lunatic. <laughs> and he's in, he's in the audience. <laughs> Well, what I found out through that experience is that I had, been, I had been introduced to some crazy, crazy stuff that was going on. Um, and anyone that knows me knows that the next logical step for me was to jump on that crazy train and ride it all the way. So we set out, um, I, I talked to Brian, and he's telling me about his vision for this building is to be a public library. Millville had never had a public library before, so this was an inspiring story. He wanted to have a library. Um, he and a group of friends had decided that this was a good idea and they were going to build it. Well, looking around at the surroundings, I thought, okay, whatever. And um, he went into his vision. And his vision was for a community space where people could learn People could um, discover community, discover each other, and really, really embody um, that, that feeling of community. The other thing is that it had to be self-sustainable. Because there was very little money, um, and it was all based on grant writing, etc., um, we had to be self-sustainable. That meant looking into solar power. That meant into using the buildings that were beside us that were also owned by, by the group. Um, apartments upstairs. All of these things to generate income that would help support the library, help support programming, etc. So, like I said, I joined the crazy train. Wrote it to, let's take it to 2013. In 2013, we opened the Millville Community Library. Um, it took persistence, it took guts, it took blood, sweat, tears, you name it. Um, it took sacrifice, 
And on weekends, we would go and we would hammer removing walls, building walls. On the weekend, weekdays, we would work to write grants to um, try to really, really plan for how we were going to run this library. None of us had any library experience. So take that train a little bit further to 2016, where we are now. Millville Community Library has now been opened for three years. And I could stand here and I could tell you about the 54 solar panels that we have on the roof of the main library building that produce enough electricity that we don't have to pay Duquesne Light a cent. And in fact, at the end of every month, Duquesne Light sends us a check. I could tell you about, thank you. I could tell you about the rain barrels and the cistern that we have that collects all of the rainwater from our roofs, filters it down through the yard into a rain garden to help prevent runoff problems and flooding that have plagued the area for so long. I could tell you about our programs or our 700 pay new patrons or our 8,000 volumes that we have on our shelves. But the purpose of my story today is not to tell you about those things. The purpose of the story today is tell you about what I learned in the process. The things that I have learned during the past seven years are invaluable. I have learned that you can do just about anything when you put your mind to it. That if you are willing to give up some time, some guts, like I said, blood, sweat, tears, you name it, you can accomplish things that you never thought were possible. Here was a crazy idea, a crazy idea to build a library from people who had no idea other than, hey, we like libraries. Um, here was this crazy idea, but we accomplished it. And I think that persistence and stick to it attitude that we've all had throughout this, and it's definitely been a team effort, um, has, has, is what led me to realize that what I really learned from all of this is that although our library's motto is more than a library, an agent for positive change, I became more than a person. I became an agent for positive change. Thank you. Who feels like they're an agent for positive change? Yeah? Reactions? That was awesome. Don't ask, just do, yeah? Just do it. I'm looking for a crazy train. You're looking for a crazy train. Chris, follow your dreams. Chris is going to jump on your crazy train. <laughs> You're wearing a hat, Brian. You're wearing a hat. I'm just saying. I said in 09. <laughs> in 09. Okay. Spend some time. Okay. <laughs> Hair dye does wonders. Um, my library, because everybody is happy to be there and it's free. What's a place you love? Brookline Boulevard. It has a walkable main street, local businesses, and I get to know my neighbors. This is one of mine, but I didn't write it. Flagstaff Hill, because it's so sunny and you never know what group might be assembling there. Ontario, because I was born there and it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs>